In this uh, lecture, I want to introduce uh, two mathematical objects that are widely used in um, applied mathematics. Um, the reason that we need that at this point is because I'm going to use them to derive uh, vector identities in the next lecture. So the first one is the Kronika delta. So what's the definition of the Kronika delta? It has a symbol delta, that's a small delta, and it has two indices, i and j. Um, we're talking about three-dimensional space, so i and j can take the value of 1, 2, or 3. So for instance, delta 1, 1, or delta 1, 2, or delta 1, 3, or delta 2, 1, etc. And then this has two distinct values. It will be equal to 1 in the case when i is equal to j, so delta 1, 1 is 1, delta 2, 2 is 1, and delta 3, 3 is 1, and it's equal to 0 if uh, i is not equal to j. So something like delta 1, 2 or delta 1, 3 would be 0. That's the Kronika delta. The other symbol is the uh, levi Civita symbol. That ha that's an epsilon. This is an epsilon. That has three indices, i, j, and k. Of course, you don't have to call the indices i, j, and k. You can call them l, m, and n. You can call them anything you want. But here, I'm using i, j, and k. Again, i, j, and k can take values uh, 1, 2, or 3. This one has three possible values. So it will be a 1 if this i, j, and k pair is one of the following. It can be uh, 1, 2, 3. Or it can be a, what's called a cyclic permutation of 1, 2, and 3. So that means that we always keep the same order. So 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. But we start with 2, so it would be 2, 3, 1. Or we start with 3, so it would be 3, 1, 2. OK? Uh, then it gets the value of 1. So in three cases, uh, with three uh, numbers in these indices, it gets the value of 1. It gets the value of minus 1 if i, j, and k are in non-cyclical order. So that means we go backwards instead of forwards. So we have 3, 2, 1. We can start with 3, 2, 1. And then we can go 2, 1, 3. And finally, we can go 1, 3, 2. OK? Um, but I can take one of three values, J can take one of three values, and K can take one of three values. So this uh, symbol can take 3 times 3 times 3 is 27 different values, 27 different values. Here we've only talked about 6, so that means the remainder of 21 are going to be this third case, which is 0. And it's hard to see, but the remainder of 21 means that either i equals j or uh, j equals k or k is equal to i. And those are all the other cases. So that means the number repeats in one of these indices. Okay. Uh, in addition to um, these two symbols, uh, to make our uh, algebra cleaner, we're going to use something that's called the Einstein summation convention. This is the famous Einstein of uh, E equals mc squared fame, among other things. Uh, what is the Einstein summation convention? Um, what it says is repeated indices are summed over. Repeated indices are summed over. So um, 
if we wanted to sum, say, from i equals 1, 2, 3 of delta i, i, right? This notation means delta 1, 1 plus delta 2, 2 plus delta 3, 3. In the Einstein summation convention, um, we would just write delta i, i, okay? So instead of saying, uh, putting the summation symbol explicitly in this convention, if the index is repeated, so if there are two i's in the index, it means by default you're summing from i equals 1, 2, 3, okay? The purpose of that convention is that you don't have all this algebra where you have to keep carrying all these summation signs. Um, the story is that Einstein's printer actually invented it, so he doesn't have to carry summation signs. But it turned out to be uh, very handy and everybody uses it. So this means, like I said, delta 1, 1 plus delta 2, 2 plus delta 3, 3. All of those have a value of 1, so this is 1 plus 1 plus 1, so this is 3. Okay? Let me give you another example. If we look at epsilon i, j, k times epsilon i, j, k, we're under the Einstein summation convention. So that means we're summing from i equals 1 to 3, j equals 1 to 3, and k equals 1 to 3. Okay? So there's a lot of terms here. There's, um, in fact, uh, 27 terms here, right? But um, most of them are zero. So um, which ones are not zero? Um, for instance, if we look at epsilon i, j, k, if i, j, and k are 1, 2, 3, then that one is not zero. So this could be epsilon 1, 2, 3, epsilon 1, 2, 3. Or um, epsilon 2, 3, 1 times 2, 3, 1 is not zero. Epsilon 3, 1, 2 times epsilon 3, 1, 2 is not zero. So we have a bunch of terms. Only six of them are not zero, right? Only six of them. The other ones are zero times zero. So in these six of them, we have three of them are one times one, and three of them are minus one times minus one. Minus one times minus one is also one. So there's six terms here, so this is a six, okay? <clears throat> I hope, uh, well, when you do the problems, you'll get a feeling for this Einstein summation convention. You'll get a feeling that when you contract three indexes, means you have 27 terms, okay? But most of them will be zero. Okay, um, to do the homework, you're gonna need a, an identity. Let me write that down here. If we look at uh, epsilon i, j, k, times epsilon L, M, N. We have six indices here. None of them are repeated, so none of them are what we say contract. There's no summation over any indices. So the right-hand side will depend on all six indices. Um, but there's a uh, identity here, which is, I won't prove, but is a very beautiful identity. It relates the uh, levi Civita symbol to the Kronecker delta. This is a three by three determinant. So the first row we can construct as a delta I L from I from the first symbol and L from the second, and then delta I M, I from the first symbol and M from the second, and then delta I N. And that's the first row of the matrix. The second row we take from J, so we would have delta J L, delta J M, and delta J N. And the third row we take from K, so we'd have delta K L, delta K M, and delta K N. 
And this 3 by 3 determinant is equal to epsilon ijk epsilon lmn. A little bit challenging to prove. I think if you wanted to prove this, you would, you would prove it based on symmetry, that somehow the symmetry in the indices on the left is equal to the symmetry of the indices on the right. But um, I think there's no point in asking you to prove this. What I do ask you to prove is how does this identity collapse when we sum over some of these indices? So what would epsilon i, j, k, epsilon i, m, n equal? So we sum over the first index. That one, that expression is going to be uh, used by me in, um, in the next lecture. So I hope you will look at the problems and figure out um, these identities when you contract the index. Okay, uh, the last thing I want to do is, uh, how, is relate this to the dot product and the cross product. The dot product, um, A dot B, uh, let me just write that as A I B I, because this will be what I commonly do later. Uh, what this means, A I B I, we're going to be working under the Einstein summation convention. So that means A11 plus A A1 B1 plus A2 B2 plus A3 B3. That's the uh, dot product, right? The uh, other one is the cross product. is a little bit more tricky, so let me uh, write that here. Uh, if we look at A cross B, uh, that's a vector, right? So how do we get a vector here? In order to get a vector, we can't just look at A cross B. We have to look at a component of A cross B. So I'm going to write a cross b sub i. So that means the ith component. So if i equals 1, that will be the first component of a cross b. If i equals 2, it will be the second component. And if i equals 3, it will be the third component. Okay. I claim that you can write this using the levi Savita symbol as epsilon where the first index is the component you're looking at, and the next two indices, i, j, k, are some are uh, contracted with the index of a. a gets the j, the second index, and b gets the k. Okay? This will be the main use of the levi Savita tensor. Um, so the ith component of A cross B is epsilon I, J, K, A, J, B, K. J and K are summed over. So let's see if that makes sense, okay? Uh, let's see if that makes sense by seeing how does this work if I equals 1, okay? So for instance, uh, A cross B index 1, so the first component, right? So that means i equals 1, so it's epsilon 1, j, k, a, j, b, k. And we're summing over j and k. So remember the levi Savita tensor will be 0 if uh, any of these indices are the same. So there are only two possibilities now when those indices are not the same. So j can be 2. So 1, 2, and then k is 3, times a, 2, b, 3, plus, or uh, j can be 3 and k can be 2. So epsilon 1, 3, 2, a, 3, b, 2. Okay, almost done. Epsilon 1, 2, 3 is plus 1. Epsilon 1, 3, 2 is a non-cyclic permutation of 1, 2, and 3. So that's a minus 1. So this is then equal to a 2b3 minus a 
B2. And if you remember your cross product, that is exactly the first component of A cross B. Okay, so let me summarize. Um, in this uh, lecture, I introduced the Kronika delta, delta IJ, and the Levi Savita symbol, epsilon IJK. And I tell you I'm going to be using the Einstein summation convention so that if an index is repeated, it will be summed over. We'll only see cases where an index is repeated twice. Okay? Indices will be repeated twice. We have this identity of, uh, which relates the Levi Savita tensor to the Kronika deltas. This will be useful in uh, deriving some of our uh, results, particularly when um, the first index is contracted. So epsilon ijk, epsilon imn. Uh, finally, in the, under the Einstein summation convention, a dot b is just written as a i b i, and uh, a cross b, the ith component, can be written in terms of the Levi Savita symbol. I'm Jeff Chasnov. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.